Hey everybody, this is Brian from bnbhomesteading.com and I wanted to give you the update for the week on the large grow tent. Let me go get the camera and I'll take you and give you a tour. I wanted to show you guys something that I found interesting this week. You can really see the difference in now is the lights that we've got going over here over the top of our uh, spinach. So these are the Mars Hydros. They're the multicolored, you know, green, red, blue. Just the, you know, the, the typical alternative to the Roledro that I've got here that I've been trying out. I'm using over my basil, which seems really happy with this light. You know, I've got a lot of growth. You can see that it's really, really vigorous. But uh, back to the spinach, you'll notice that the uh, there's a lot of yellowing all the way up to about there all the way over to here and you'll notice that's directly where these lights are shining pretty much you'll see there's a lot of green on this end over here on this side because it's shifted a little bit further this way and you'll see that it gets greener as you go away from this light so i'm thinking that even though i've got these lights set about 30 inches above the the plants themselves that's still too bright for these broadleaf spinach type plants and they really don't like this extra light that's coming off of those Whereas, I mean, the basil, when I had these same lights over the top of it, and I had it about the same height, it was perfectly fine. So I guess it just has to do with the species of type of, you know, greens you're growing. But I thought that might be helpful for you guys that are doing the uh, medicinal type grows, or you're doing your cloning and that kind of stuff. This may help you guys keep from burning your plants to realize you may need, even though they're clones, you may need to have a higher distance up from where your actual plants are. If you get too close, you may end up with a situation like this where you're starting to burn them. And that's another good idea is, you know, if you're doing your clones, you can actually put, or your plants, do like what I did with this spinach tray here, it's kind of offset. So you'll see that if you've got too much light, this one over here is burning and, you know, yellowing. Whereas this one over here, it's, it's progressing fine. You know, there is a little bit of bolting. You know, I don't know if you have, I don't know, I don't know if on the medicinal herbs you have a thing called bolting. I'm not an expert on that kind of thing, but you know, you can see that, you know, my spinach down here is really bolted in comparison to, you know, with what you grow outside in the cooler temperatures, because this tent does get pretty warm in here because I run it a little bit hotter because I want my tomatoes to have the warmer heat. And you can tell that the, uh, the mint and everything down here, it's fine. Poinsettia's fine. Basil's fine. It's just that spinach does not like that. But I wanted to share that with you guys this week because, uh, you know, and I've been coming down here watering this week. I keep all these watered the exact same in these uh, spinach trays, and I notice that it just seems like where that light is, it's just frying it, and it's just you know taking that, taking that uh, chlorophyll and just burning it out of those leaves. I thought that was kind of interesting. You know, that's the kind of thing I enjoy. <laughs> I come down here after work, but uh, anyway, you can see the, uh, the tomato plant over here, one of the cuttings. That's the leggy one that we had last week. It's clear up to the top of the tent now, and it's just going all over here. It's got a lot of a lot of flowering. Uh, I don't know if I see any fruit set at this point on those, but they're clear up to the top of the tent, so I'm assuming they're not going to keep growing anymore. They're going to kind of stint off, and they're going to just let their put their energy into the uh, the flowers to set fruit. We've got a lot of tomatoes. You can see going through here, a lot of tomatoes over there. So Paul is not going to be able to uh, get on me too much for taking a few and sneaking them out when I come down here to check on these every night when I get home from work. This tomato plant's doing real well. A lot of fruit set. I mean, you can see this just back here or everywhere. It's all green right now. I don't think there's any red ones. I think one, maybe one back down there is starting to turn red. But that's uh, that's okay. I want to start harvesting off of that little guy next. We got the point set I mentioned. It's it's doing really well. A lot of new growth. Getting ready for uh, you know Christmas. It's starting to you know a lot of red. This over here should turn a nice red color by probably about December. Has, uh, it's all new growth, but yet it's got to, it's still got to have that time to veg and and turn. I mentioned the mint. The mint's really starting to take off. If you notice in the last few videos over the last few weeks, you can see there's a lot of new growth on this mint. I'll be able to start harvesting off this and bringing it upstairs for Paula and I to have in our tea in the evenings or our coffee in the morning. The uh, basil is really taking off. We got a lot of flowering going on now, and so I'm going to let these these. Uh, flowers head stay on there I'm not going to pinch these off I want to see if I can actually start harvesting some of this basil to uh, get seeds so that way I can just keep propagating for free my uh, my basil in new trays 
as these age and they uh, eventually die off and go to flower and I've heard that after they go to flower uh, and you, you let the flowers go off and they go to seed the basil gets more of a bitter taste so I wanted to I wanted to kind of try that and see if the ones that are getting the, uh, the flowering are going to go bitter and if so then I'll start pinching off some of these other ones down lower before they set their uh, their seed heads you know some of these are setting seed heads like this this one over here setting its seed heads I could probably just pinch this off just like that pop it off before it starts to flower and it'll keep going because it'll start sending up new basil leaves coming out of there so I can always keep things running running smoothly keep this ship trucking along and then it gives me an opportunity to you know eat some of this basil and that is interesting because up here closer to this uh, the seed head forming, that basil does not taste like the basil we've been getting. It tastes almost a little bitter. Yeah, that's, that's something interesting to note. It doesn't taste that good. <laughs> I'll have to swallow that down. I'm always spitting on the camera. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the grow tent for uh, this week. You can see there's a lot of new growth. You can see it back there. That one there, I believe that was that was a pop-up that came out of the compost, the worm compost that I put in here. And I think that is a small cherry tomato. I mean, they have a lot of small little tiny, tiny fruit sets on that guy. There's one that's almost ready back there. You can see it. And uh, I'll probably get a few off of it. If it gets much taller without setting much more fruit, I'm probably just going to cut that out of there because it's just taking nutrients out of the, the pot down there for this uh, indigo rose. Which this indigo rose has a lot of fruit set on it. A lot of good sized ones there. I've seen a few. I've actually harvested off that plant before. I, put, I picked a couple off of uh, this here this last week. And then there's, you know, down there you've got a lot of nice fruit set on this newer newer clone of this uh, indigo rose tomato plant. And you can see the height, it's gotten clear. We had to tuck it back in after you remember in last week's video. Here's the height of this guy. It's almost to the top of the little cage here. So it'll start vining over and then I'm probably gonna take it, go this way with it and then back over across this way when I start to vine it. But that's kind of the update for the uh, large grow tent. Spin this back around here. All right. It's been Brian from PB Homesteading. Hope you guys are enjoying these videos. I love making them. I'll talk to you guys next week. All right. Bye.